kicking off a, a new series which will take us to and maybe even through Easter. Um, not sure, it just depends on how, how, how it goes. And um, the series is, is entitled Joy and Pain, um, Relational Insight from the Family of Joseph. <laughs> joy and pain if you just want to package the series which perhaps we will even do joy and pain relational insights from the family of Joseph you already know that anytime you're dealing with any kind of relationship it will involve joy and pain and do I have a witness here this it's just a part of the fabric. It, it, it's a part of the of the fabric, and it appears as though um, relationships, whether it's spouse, friend, church member, child, parent, cousin, niece, nephew, in relationships that cause you the most joy can conversely cause you the most pain. Sometimes there becomes a thin line between the two. Look like I'm the only one here. Look like I'm the only one here. The thin line between, between the two. Um, and so one look at this family. Um, crazy family. Absolutely crazy. Anybody ever have any craziness in your family? I mean, just... <laughs> crazy people. I know you don't want to own up to them. I know you want us to believe everybody in your family is a doctor and a lawyer and, 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 and doing real well. Them are the only ones you talk about. But <laughs> what about you don't, you don't say nothing about Pookie and them. They, they, you know, just, just craziness. And um, so I just Today, however, what I thought I'd do is to just get a little insight. See, Joseph and his brothers, which you will discover um, next week when we get to, oh, chapters 33, 34, somewhere in there. You, 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 you discover some craziness between Joseph and his brothers. But I believe that the craziness doesn't get started with them. Their mother and father and them was crazy too, and 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 sometimes dysfunction in family is just cyclical, and sometimes you don't even know how much the dysfunction in your family has been passed down to you, and how you've passed that down to your children. And now, don't think about nobody else right now, because you're thinking about someone else. So I thought, I thought just a little bit on, on um, the family. Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. And we're, we're doing the Lord's Supper today, so I, I have to abbreviate this. And uh, but I want to be as thorough as possible. Genesis chapter 29, verse 31 from the New International Version. 29, 31. <coughs> Hear these words. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant, gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to her son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. Again she conceived. And when she gave birth to her son, she said, Now at last my husband will become attached to me. 
because I have borne him three sons. So he was named Levi. Here it is. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time, I'll praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Watch it. Then she stopped having children. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I want to preach from the subject. What are you giving birth to? What? And I know it's early, so to make sure that the congregation is engaged, please turn to your neighbor and just ask them the question, what are you giving birth to? <laughs> what are you giving birth to? What are you giving birth to? Uh, choice, focus, dependent. Um, the trouble all got started. Trouble all got started long time before this, um, before there was a Rachel or before there was Leah, trouble got started for Jacob because um, he tricked his father and uh, acted like he was his brother Esau. I used to be able to say stuff like that. I used to be able to say, um, and you know the story, but nowadays in, in contemporary Christian culture, you can't assume that people know the story, so you don't mind if I just tell the story, right? Okay. So the trouble got started when, what's his name? Jacob tried to, he tricked his dad and um, he got the birthright that should have been given to his older brother Esau. So he gets the blessing and once the blessing is irretrievably, irrevocably given to Jacob, Esau becomes upset and it's Esau's goal to kill, destroy his brother after the mourning period after their father had died, after that mourning period was over. So um, the mother, Rebecca, gets news that Esau wants to kill Jacob. So she comes up with a scheme herself to get Jacob away from the um, household, to send him to his uncle Laban's house to go find a wife. And so Jacob makes his way to his uncle Laban's house. And when he gets there, sometime after, he, become, he becomes fixated with a sister by the name of Rachel, becomes fixated, has to have her. He said, I worked seven years, ain't no mountain high enough, all that, <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes, um, I'll do whatever I have to do to be with Rachel. So Laban says, you can have her after you work for seven years. Works for seven years, it's the day of the wedding, the feast, the bride who he marries is veiled, so he doesn't really know exactly who it is. He has no reason not to think that it's Rachel uh, uh, to whom he had been engaged. And so the wedding goes on, um, both of them say, I do, vows are made, and it's a done deal. They party all day long. Read, read, read the Bible. They have a long wedding reception, they're drinking, and the night comes, and um, Jacob goes into the tent, you know, you know, they, they've been drinking all day long, it's been seven years. <laughs> Looks like I got a real holy crowd here, they've been, they've been drinking all day long. Uh, touch your neighbor, tell them they've been drinking all day long, and it's been seven years. <laughs> Now you tell me, <laughs> when, 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 when he gets into the tent, you know, he, he doesn't even know that it's Leah. He thinks it's Rachel, but at that point, you know, and, and, and so the, the, um, marriage is consummated and, um, um, because whomever he was intimate with, would become the wife. That's when it was consummated. And so he gets up in the morning, discovers that it's Leah. <laughs> and, and, and the trickster has been tricked. And you don't hear me. The, the, the past catches up with him, what he had been done to everybody else, and now it's now done to him. And, and so it's, it's a done deal. Leah is 
wife, he's attached to her uh, legally. He's not really into her, but he, she becomes his wife. Seven years, uh, he goes to, the, to Laban, why would you trick me? And they go through this whole thing. Well, in our culture, you, you have to marry the older daughter off first. You can imagine Jacob said, well, dude, you could have told me that from, <laughs> from the get-go. I'd have been out here seven years ago, but... Uh, he says, I still want Rachel, so I said, Rachel, I worked another seven, seven years. And so he ends up with these two wives, which causes a world of trouble for him. He ends up with these two wives, Rachel and Leah. And um, the trouble particularly impacts Leah, who is married to uh, Jacob, but his heart is really not with her. He's not really into her. So the Bible says that she suffers because Jacob is not loving her. Uh -huh. and, and so here she is. Here she is. The Bible says that the Lord saw that Leah was not loved. Oh, God. And, 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 and he enabled her to conceive. The Lord saw. That was his vision. The Lord enabled her to conceive. That's his provision. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. he, 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 he sees. See. See, um, it's hard for God to see and not provide. That's why, that's why when the lamb is given to Abraham right when he was about to slay his son Isaac, a lamb is given instead of Isaac. And, 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 and as a result, Abraham ends up naming that place Jehovah Jireh, which we always say means the Lord will provide. That's not true. Literally, Jehovah Jireh means the Lord sees. But it's okay to translate it, the Lord will provide. Because if the Lord sees, he'll also... He, I thought y'all do better than that. Now, the Lord can't see without providing. If he knows what's going on, he can't help but to do something about what is going on. The Lord saw that she was not loved, and he enabled her to have children. She is favored by God, uh, uh, but she's still living a life of frustration. So she gives birth to the first child, and his name is, she names him Reuben. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She, she named him Reuben, which means uh, the Lord has seen. Because she says, the Lord has seen my, my misery. So she says, now I know my husband is going to love me because I've borne him a son. So nothing happens. The relationship does not change. She gets pregnant again. Because mm -hmm. evidently, you know, um, things kept happening. And, okay, I'm trying to get y'all to read between a whole lot of lines here. Is it? The, 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 the sex act is not born of emotional bond. It's born of just, just physiological need. And as a result, the children keep coming. So she names the next one Simeon, which means the Lord hears. Because he, she says, the Lord has heard that I am not loved. She has a third child. She names him Levi. Now, what you have to understand is that as she's given birth, to these children, she's simultaneously given birth to more frustration. And you know she's given birth to frustration according to the names that she's given the children. Because the first two sons at least had Lord in their names. Oh God. Uh, uh, the first, first child, Reuben, the Lord sees. Second child, Simeon. The Lord hears. The third one, Levi, God ain't even in his name. His name simply means attached. Because she believes that now Jacob is going to have to be attached to her because she has borne him three sons. You, you, aren't, you, aren't, you aren't catching this. With each, as time goes on, She's given birth to more and more depression and frustration. But then a corner is turned. 
This is where I wanted to get. Her corner is turned. Wake up. The corner is turned because she says she can see the fourth time. And she gave birth to the son. And she says, this time will I praise the Lord. All of a sudden, a, a, a change is made. A corner is turned. She names the last boy Judah, which means praise. And, and, and I'm just curious. Um, to, to, I, I want to ask, what was her name? Uh, Leah, how it is that all of a sudden now, she's able to give birth to something different. She had given birth to frustration for all these years. She had given birth to depression for all these years. How all of a sudden, Leah, are you able to give birth to pray? She said, well, first of all, if any of y'all, Leah's talking to y'all right now, if any of y'all are going to give birth to something different, first of all, it's a matter of choice. I, it, a, because the reason I know that is because look, look at her language. She says, this time I will praise the Lord. Nothing about how she feels because the, her circumstances have not changed. There's nothing in the relationship between she and Jacob. They're not going out on more, da on, on more dates. There's no more intimacy between them. Nothing in terms of her circumstances have changed. The only thing that has changed is her will. I will praise the Lord. Jacob, do what you want to. I w I'm giving birth to something else now. Jacob, I don't care if the thing works out between me. I'm giving birth. I would like it to work out. I, I would like to be attached to you and you to me. But I have decided by choice that I'm giving birth to something else. Can I just tell you? Sometimes if you're going to experience a new level of joy, a new level of praise, that you just have to choose to. Some of y'all looking at me, but pastor, but pastor, the doctor's report has not changed. But, 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 but pastor, I'm still unemployed. But, but pastor, the relationship is still rocky. I got all of that. But at some point, you got to make a choice that I'm going to get up out of this depression, that I'm going to get up out of this frustration, at least in my spirit. Sometimes the only way you can work yourself to a praise in church, the only way you can lift up holy hands is if you say, I'm just going to choose to. I ain't got no reason around me. Everything around me is still the same, but I'm just going to choose to give. Is there anybody here who just ever, ever just made a choice? I'm not going to allow life to choose for me. I'm going to choose myself. You see, up till now, mm, Leah had allowed Jacob to control two things. <laughs> she had allowed him to control the circumstances and her spirit. But now she says, Jacob, you ain't going to get me twice because you can control my circumstances. But you're not going to control what is under my control. I can't control how, how you're loving Rachel, my sister, and not loving me. But I am going to control how I react. I'm not going to let you get me twice. You got me once by doing this to me. You ain't going to get me twice by making me feel a certain way. I'm going to choose to give him glory. You got to know how to not let folks control your spirit. The boss may be able to control how much you make. You don't hear me. And, and people may control this, that, and the other. But you have to say, no, I'm not going to let you control everything. My spirit is in my control. My mood is in my control. My emotions are in my control. Come on, my, my, my posture is in my control. My countenance is, you can't put a smile, a frown on my face. Only I can control how I react to what I'm going through. Uh, 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 don't mean don't mean to bother you but just tell somebody tell them i'm just choosing to today i'm i'm just gonna choose joy i'm 
I'm just going to choose praise. I'm, I'm just going to choose thanksgiving. Uh, stuff is still the same, but if I'm going to give birth to what I give birth to, number, number one, it is a matter of choice. Talk to the church, Leah. Leah says the reason I was able to give birth to Judah is number one was a matter of choice. The second was a matter of focus. Uh -huh. see, see, something happened. Something happened between the time that she had given birth to Levi, the third child, and Judah, the fourth child. And I believe that it has something to do with where her focus was. See, her focus <clears throat> up to this point had been on what was absent. What was absent was Jacob's love. But maybe now she's focusing on what's present. She has four healthy boys whom she had probably been neglecting, chasing after their daddy. But she says the only way I can get, the only way I can give birth to what I need to give birth to is I probably need to change my focus from what's absent to what's present. Because if my focus is on what's absent, I'm going to stay in this state that I've been in all these years. So don't get me wrong, says Leah. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to make you think that I'm some sister who all of a sudden don't need no man. I ain't let, hadn't let open them get to me. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm still, I don't, I don't feel like I got to be so independent and autonomous and, and by myself and all of that. I got to get to that. You know, some of you, I lost, I lost, I lost some of my sisters. I know I lost y'all. I, I lost y'all. It's okay. It's good. I, yep. she, she said, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I wish I could go further on it, but y'all, mm, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I haven't gotten to that point. She said, I would still appreciate. Jacob's affection. However, my focus is no longer on what's absent. I'm going to settle on what's present because the devil will have you focusing on what's absent and you overlook what's present. Some of us have been complaining for about 20 years because of what's absent in your life. But I dare you to start thinking for just a moment on what's present because there are some things that God has blessed you with. Come on, come on. I may not have the car that I want to have, but I'm a blessing for, for what I do have. I, I may not have the wardrobe that I want to have, but I'm just going to sit and thank him for what is present and stop allowing the devil to get me with what is absent. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing will help you to give birth to praise like a focus on what's present. Because what that does is that leads you to a level of thanksgiving. You start it with a level of thought. Thought collides with thanksgiving. Let me say it again. You start it with a level of thought. And you collide, look, 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 pregnancy occurs when, when, when sperm makes contact with the egg. Praise occurs when, when, when the sperm of thought collides with the egg of thanksgiving. And you can't help but to give birth. You're going to get pregnant with something. You, you're going to get pregnant with something when those who come together. But what you got to start doing is you got to know how to get pregnant before you come to church. Some of us wait till Sunday morning and try to get pregnant on Sunday morning. You got to know how to get pregnant on Saturday night. You start thinking about his goodness. You start thinking about how he woke you up this morning. You start thinking about how good he has been. And when you get to church, worship becomes the midwife. 
Some of y'all want worship to get you pregnant. Worship is just a midwife that gives birth to the fact that you are only going to be pregnant. I've been thinking all week long about how good he has been. Somebody here is ready to give birth right now. Just touch somebody. Tell them I'm ready to give birth right now. I feel something happening right now. I feel something happening right now. I'm, I'm feeling some labor pains right now. And I'm ready to give birth to some glory. Uh, 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 can I just say it my way? Do I have a witness here? No, 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 no. It, it, tell me, tell me. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, uh, tell me, Leah, how it is that, that you were able to give birth to praise. She said, first of all, it was a matter of choice. And then it's a matter of focus. Finally, it's a matter of dependence. It's a matter of dependence. The most telling words in the text here, the most telling words are as then she stopped having children. Now, later on, many years after that, she has a couple more kids, I think. But it's, it's many years after. The reason I know that is because the oldest boy, by the time she has any more children, he, he's old enough to be out in the fields. I, I, I'm going to talk about that later on today. Come back. I'm going to talk about that later. But, but, but the, the, the oldest son, he, he's, Reuben is old now. And so, um, what's her name? L Leah stops having children. Now, according to the language of the text, just read it, just in English. You ain't got no Hebrew and Aramaic and all that. Just, 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 just English. I ain't going to tell you the, the Hebrew says. <laughs> um, the Bible said she stopped having children, which kind of puts it in the active sense as though she chose. It, it doesn't appear as though Jacob just decided to stop sleeping with her. It doesn't, decide as, it doesn't sound as though the Lord closed up her womb. It just decide. It, it sounds to me, and I could be wrong about this. When I get to heaven, correct me, Leah. And uh, uh, it, it, just, it, just, it just appears to me that Leah herself chose to stop having children because she no longer depended on that to feed her own self-worth. Now, I don't know. That might be a leap in interpretation. I, 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 I don't know, but it just appears that way. Because prior to that, especially in that culture, what gave her a sense of self-worth was the ability to have children. But now she says, listen, look, 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 look. I got something feeding my self-esteem that's no longer outside of me but that is inside of me. And the reason why some of y'all are not shouting is because some of you are still depending on external stuff to build you up, to elevate your self-esteem and make you feel like you are somebody. Leah's talking to you right now. She says, listen, you better make sure the center of your joy is inside of you and not around you because if the right things are not happening around you, you're going to keep giving birth to depression. You're going to keep giving birth to frustration. But I dare you. To go inside. I dare you to find the source of your uh, joy on the inside of you. Because when you do, when you do, doesn't matter what's going on around you. Doesn't matter if things are going well or not. You will be able to give birth to a level of praise and celebration. And I might as well tell you, as I could try to just wrap this thing up here, I might as well tell you that it's more productive to give birth to praise than it is to give birth to complaint and frustration. It's more productive to give birth to Judah than it is to give birth to Rubians, Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. Because not a whole lot come from Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. But when you read the word, there's a whole lot that came from Judah. Ooh, do I have a witness here? 
From Judah there came kings of Israel. From Judah there came great prophets. From Judah there came men and women of the faith. But let me cut across that and go to the end. From Judah there came the lion from the tribe of Judah. And his name is Jesus. All I'm trying to tell you is that praise gives birth to a whole lot. Joy is productive. Praise is productive. Praise gives birth to power. Praise gives birth to transformation. Praise makes walls come down. Praise makes your enemies be defeated. Praise takes the heat out of the fire. Praise closes the lion's jaws. Praise opens up jail cells. Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here? Wait a minute, some of y'all are saying, Pastor, you're being too psychological. Pastor, you're pawning off this cheap theology that a whole lot of people are preaching, that you can just praise your way out of your problems. I don't believe that you can praise your way out of your problems, but I tell you what can happen. When you start praising God, God gets happy, and God jumps into your problems. God jumps into your circumstances. Is there anybody here who's tired of giving birth to frustration? Is there anybody here who's tired of giving birth to depression? Turn to your neighbor and tell them I'm ready to give birth to Judah. I'm ready to give birth to Judah. I've had enough of Simeon. I've had enough of Reuben. I've had enough of Levi. I feel Judah coming. I feel Judah is on the way. I'm changing my focus. I'm making a choice. I'm changing my dependence. And I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I feel like pulling this thing. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Is there anybody here who feels the labor pains? Is there anybody here who wants to give birth to something different? On Monday, I'm giving birth to Judah. On Tuesday, I'm going to give birth to Judah. On Wednesday, I'm going to give birth to Judah. I'm telling Reuben goodbye. I'm telling Simeon goodbye. I'm telling Levi goodbye. Yeah! And a holler one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know it's just the early service, but I feel something happening here. Lift up your hands and give him glory. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Is there anybody here who's just going to make the choice? I got some problems, but I'm going to make the choice. I got some difficulties. But I'm making a choice. I got some mountains in my life. But I'm making a choice. Because praise is not what I feel. Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Take your neighbor by the hand and tell them praise is what I do. Praise is not what I feel. But praise is what I do. Praise when I'm going through. Praise is what I do. Yeah. And, uh, and let the mountains get high. Let the valleys get low. I'm giving birth to something different.